Transparency is controlled using the transparency panel, and you can apply transparency to any solid fill, any gradient or pattern fill, even strokes can be transparent, and type can be transparent too. Transparency is expressed in terms of opacity percentage. And in this example here on the left, I have some solid blue ellipses overlapping each other. And when I select all of them, over on the transparency panel, I can see the opacity setting is 100%. So these are all solid, completely opaque, and this is the default for any fill or stroke. The mode here is set to normal, and that's also the default. You can even see a thumbnail of the selection here. Now, just to the right here, I'll select a single oval from this collection, same shape, same color, but the opacity on the panel reads at 50%, and this is why I can see through these, and they get darker wherever the shapes overlap, getting the darkest here in the center where the most overlapping is occurring. And back on the panel, there's a slider here, and I can just change the percentage and see it update on the artboard. And so this is the most basic use of the transparency panel. Also notice the type here next to this example. It's transparent also. And over in the transparency panel, you can see it's set to 50%. And below here, I've done the same thing with the same shape. But in this case, I've added a blue stroke just to illustrate the fact that strokes can be transparent too. Now, I wanna draw our attention to the appearance panel. I mentioned it before when we were talking about a good place to look when you want to get the ID of an object to find out what's going on and whatever you have selected on your artboard. Well, you can think of the appearance panel as being like a layers panel for individual objects. And we went over some of this in my Holly Shop workshop. So I'll select a solid blue oval again. And in the appearance panel, you can see its whole story is right here. It's pretty simple. It's a path. It has no stroke and a solid fill and default opacity, or it's 100% opaque, solid. And this collection of properties here is what Illustrator refers to as a basic appearance. It's a stroke, set to none in this case, a fill, and default opacity, solid. And same for this shape here with the blue stroke. This is a basic appearance, a fill, a stroke, and default opacity. I could make this a pattern fill, I could even make it a gradient fill, and Illustrator would still consider this to be a basic appearance. And when you're working in the realm of basic appearance, there's really no major pressing need to get into the appearance panel, but start using transparency, effects like drop shadows, uh, add multiple fills. You can stack fills one on top of the other in a single object, and that is possible in Illustrator. Or maybe you want a solid stroke paired with a transparent fill, Things like that. Those are complex appearances, and that's when the appearance panel is essential. And it resembles the layers panel for good reason, because the stacking order of all these properties matters. So I'm going to keep pointing us to the appearance panel as we go through the lessons. Now another thing about the transparency panel, I mentioned before that this mode here, normal, is the default. And in this drop-down menu, there are a lot of other options. These are blending modes, just like you may already be familiar with from working in Photoshop. An important difference, though, is that blending modes in Illustrator are applied to objects, whereas in Photoshop, they're applied to an entire layer. Blending modes affect the interaction between the color of the object you apply the mode to and the color or colors beneath it. So just to introduce these, I'll show you two of the most commonly used blending modes applied to the ovals we've been using so far in this demo. And I've just added a white circle here in the center, as you can see on this first example. The menu of blending modes is broken up into groups with like characteristics. And you can see here, these are darkening modes. These are the lightening modes. And then there are modes that affect the contrast and there are even more below, and you can explore and play with all of these on your own. But for now, we're gonna look at Multiply, which is a darkening mode that is commonly used and very effective. So I'll select my ovals here and then change them to Multiply. And you can see the darkening that happens as we move towards all the overlapping shapes in the center. They get darker, more intense, but the white circle has disappeared now, it's invisible. And this is because Multiply is a darkening mode and it uses color to darken everything below it in the stacking order. And since white is an absence of color, 
It has no effect on anything below it. And in this case, it just becomes invisible. I'll change the color of one of these ovals to yellow. And you can see the blue above is blending with the yellow below to create green and it's darkening. All of this is happening at 100%. So if I change the opacity percentage of this blue oval here to 50%, there's less blue to darken the green. And so you see a lighter green at the overlap area here. So multiply is inherently transparent, even at 100% opacity. The one exception is black. Let's change this center circle to black from white and it's in multiply and it looks completely opaque. And that's because you really can't get any darker than black. So I encourage you to explore with the different modes, take a solid fill, experiment with the opacity setting and get a feel for this. To me, multiply approaches what you can do with watercolor, overlapping colors and blending them. And so I use this mode a lot in my work. And just for comparison's sake, here's what happens to the same shapes and the same colors at 50% in the normal mode. So the ovals are blending their color with the color below, but Multiply does this with added darkening for a more intense effect. Now on the flip side, we have the popular lightning mode, screen. So I'll change this from normal to screen and wherever colors are overlapping and blending with the colors below, they get lighter. And there are three shapes overlapping here, so this is even lighter. Now, screen has no effect on white because white is as light as you can get. So what color would you imagine might disappear in the screen mode, just like white did in the multiply example? Well, I'll go ahead and change this circle from white to black. And you can see in the transparency panel, the thumbnail is showing a black circle, but in screen mode on the artboard, it practically disappears. And once again, to mention the appearance panel, you can see with this oval selected, here the opacity reads screen. It's no longer default opacity, and so now this is a complex appearance. So transparency and blending modes can give you a lot of interesting results that will enhance your solid color fills, even pattern fills, and of course, gradient fills too. I'll make a rectangle and I'll fill it with that crazy fruit stripe linear gradient we saw before. Its transparency is normal, 100% completely opaque. And now I'll just dial back the opacity percentage and see what happens. All the color stops and all the blends are now transparent. And I can throw in a blending mode too, just for fun. So we'll try screen. And now I'll try multiply. And I should mention too, in this video, you may see banding in the gradients and you'll have to forgive that because the video at this resolution doesn't capture smooth blending. It shows that banding effect, but on your screen and my screen here in my studio, these transitions should be smooth. So we've covered some good information about transparency, blending modes and the transparency panel. And we've also begun looking at the appearance panel and talking about basic versus complex appearances and how that relates to transparency. In the next lesson, we'll return to our fishbowl illustration and apply what we've learned about transparency to working with gradients.